Would you like higher power bills? Would you like construction costs to go even higher? Would you like housing affordability to get even worse? Would you like the cost of living crisis to become even more dire? Well, if you do, there's a solution just for you. Move to Victoria, because the Victorian ALP's latest proposal will do just that. The Victorian ALP wants a profit-sharing agreement with Indigenous Australians for energy generated, especially for renewable energy. They would also like to funnel mining royalties directly to Indigenous Australians. This, to be clear, is going to add costs to all energy generated and to anything dug up out of the ground. And these costs will be passed on to everyone else, thereby adding to the expense people have to incur. This, of course, is courtesy of the relevant minister, Lily D'Ambrosio, who stated at the Uruk Justice Commission, quote, My intention is to embed within a critical mineral strategy the concept of traditional owner benefit sharing, but also, of course, a proper, formally recognised set of rules around what does meaningful engagement mean. We have to acknowledge that traditional First Peoples cannot possibly be able to secure what self-determination means for them, without having an embedded and reliable source of revenue for themselves. Either through processes that I hope to deploy through renewable energy processes, what the future might be in mineral extractions, and also ultimately through treaty. So there we have it, Lily D'Ambrosio wants a treaty, and also she wants reparations. Basically she wants to funnel money from renewable energy, energy in general, and also from mining royalties to indigenous Australians. Because to use her words, she doesn't think that there's a reliable source of revenue for Indigenous Australians, and she wants treaty, and she wants to secure, it seems, reparations, so to speak. Let's be clear, this is simply reparations and part of a treaty by another name. It appears that Lily D'Ambrosio realises a treaty probably would cause the government to, well, lose government, so they're going about it by the back route. They're going about it indirectly. This is a treaty by another name. In essence, they're trying to circumvent the will of the population. They voted overwhelmingly against a treaty. It is also race-based discrimination. Outright discrimination. The Victorian ALP is floating the idea that one category of people is different or to be treated differently on the basis of race. One category of people gets access to mining royalties and the other doesn't, at least not directly. This is obviously racially discriminatory. There's no other way to put it. It is racially discriminatory. It is point blank discrimination. I posit also that such race-based discrimination is clearly prima facie racism. The Victorian ALP should be ashamed of themselves. They should not be treating people differently on the basis of race. All people should be treated equally. There should be no discrimination and no racism. But the Victorian ALP and Lily D'Ambrosio seem to want more discrimination, not less, if we look at this proposal. It would also obviously increase energy prices and the prices of anything else. This is because it would clearly increase costs for energy generators and for miners. After all, if a portion of royalties is going directly to Indigenous Australians, then royalties are going to need to increase. The reason for this is the Victorian government needs to fund things like hospitals and schools and roads from somewhere. And if they're now funneling a portion of royalties directly to one category of people, they need to plug that budget black hole. Similarly with energy generation. If energy generators now need to funnel some money to Indigenous Australians, well that means their costs have now gone up. They're going to pass on these costs to all consumers, thereby increasing the cost of energy prices, but also the cost of anything that needs to be manufactured with those raw materials, such as things made out of iron ore as but one example. This is not rocket science. It will obviously increase prices. Clearly, this at a time when inflation is stubbornly persistently high and the RBA has been struggling to get inflation under control. This at a time when people are struggling with a cost of living crisis. It seems the ALP wants to make this worse. The ALP is going to exacerbate the cost of living crisis and people's affordability issues with proposals such as this. They appear to be completely tone deaf. They appear to not realise how much people are actually struggling. Now to be clear, the Liberals have been a little bit insipid on this whole issue. 
they vacillate all over the place about whether or not they support treaty. The Liberals have finally realised the voters don't want treaty, and they don't seem to like proposals like this coming out and opposing it. However, the Liberals really need to pull their finger out and oppose more of this idiocy and do so more actively. They need to realise the voters don't want this, as we can see from the voice result. And if about 60% of Victorians were voting against the voice, I suspect that more would vote against what is effectively reparations and effectively a de facto treaty. After all, those things are significantly more onerous and more costly than the voice would have been by itself. This in addition to the fact that in her statement here, she wants additional engagement processes between energy generators, it seems, and miners, and Indigenous Australians. This would be very similar to the cultural heritage laws in WA that created gridlock and were a complete trash fire. Furthermore, as to her comment about whether Indigenous Australians have benefited from mining royalties and energy generation, well, clearly, energy generation is necessary for all of Victoria. All Victorians benefit from energy generation. Furthermore, all Victorians benefit from the mining royalties, because how else are roads and infrastructure and school and hospitals going to be built and maintained? Clearly, mining royalties are one aspect of that. Without the royalties, you would not have those things generated to the same degree. And Indigenous Australians, like all other members of Victoria, benefit from all of those things. Such things like hospitals and schools don't build themselves. Therefore, the idea that Indigenous Australians haven't benefited from royalties is utterly absurd. They've benefited to the same degree as every other Australians. Then we have to move on to the idea that Indigenous Australians need to have some reliable source of income generated seemingly from these royalties. Well, let's be clear, no other person gets this reliable source of income directly from royalties. No one else can rely on mining royalties as their income. No one can sit back and use that as their, quote, reliable source of income. Only the government seemingly can actually do this. I would love to be able to rely on mining royalties as a source of income, but clearly I obviously can't, much like no one else can. And it would be blatantly discriminatory to allow one category of person to access such royalties, but to not allow other people to access them. This is clear prima facie discrimination. Indigenous Australians also have access to work. They have access to other sources of income like dividends, much like everyone else. They are not locked out of the workforce. They are not locked out of the investment area. They are not locked out of other things that all other Australians have access to. They don't need, per se, this reliable source of income from royalties. So therefore, the underlying premise behind this is completely wrong. Then we also have the practical issues. Under this proposal, they would need to decide on who is Indigenous for the purposes of this. What about if that person has been ostracised? What if that person only realised their ethnic background recently? What if that person is Indigenous and from Victoria, but has moved interstate? Does that person still get access to the mining royalties or not? There are a whole lot of these questions that seemingly have not been answered properly or even really thought through. The Victorian ALP here is a clear trash fire. This is but one example. Victorian ALP went all in behind the voice. They are seemingly all in behind a treaty. They are seemingly all in behind robbing Victorians in order to fund their own pet personal causes. This is an agency conflict through and through. Now, my sympathy for Victorian ALP voters is very limited. The Victorians who voted for the ALP voted for Dan Andrews' government and that disastrous rule. Jacinta Allen is easily as bad as Dan Andrews. People who voted for the ALP in Victoria voted seemingly with their eyes wide open about how bad they would be. People voted for this government seemingly sanguine about the fact that the ALP treats them with outright contempt. Now, to be clear, the Liberals' performance has been underwhelming. But a slightly useless party is better than an actively harmful one. I take a party that doesn't really do very much, maybe is a little bit complacent, maybe is a little bit aloof, but at least they're not doing very much that's harmful. I take that party over the ALP that is actively making things worse and has done so all throughout Dan Andrews's reign. Of course, however, I have significantly more sympathy for the other Victorians than are now lumped with this disastrous government until they next have a chance to vote. We can only hope that perhaps the federal government comes in and tries to stop this where it is within their constitutional remit, although under Anthony Albanese, that appears to be unlikely. Therefore, voters will need to be looking elsewhere other than the Victorian ALP. 
They might look at the slightly ineffectual liberals, or they could look at one of the minor parties, such as One Nation, for example, which have consistently fought these types of policies. However, regardless, this proposal is going to make things worse, and it is very clear that Lily D'Ambrosio and the Victorian ALP are not governing in the interests of all Victorians. And the ALP more generally is not governing in the interests of all Australians at this point in time.